Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps. Today I'm gonna to be comparing two different bubble bar kits. One is a kid's craft kit from Hobby Lobby. The other one is a professional maker kit from Wholesale Supplies Plus. The bubble bars made from this kit are probably intended for you and your family members. Whereas the bubble bars made with the professional kit should be good enough to be sold. Will the price justify the outcome? Or will the cheaper option reign supreme? I paid $8.49 for this kid's craft kit at Hobby Lobby because it was on sale. And for this bubble bar kit, I paid $40.44. At least the shipping was free. Let's begin with the children's kit. All right, let's see what eight bucks bought me. I thought there was another thing to pull out, but this is just, oh, I see. It is another thing. All right, so, instructions, warnings. Right off the bat, I will say, the packaging, very minimal, very easy to understand. There's not that many items in here. I appreciate that they gave me some gloves. You hardly ever see that in a kid's craft kit, but it's so necessary so you don't stain your hands. This just doesn't look that complicated, and the instructions are very easy to understand and have a lot of cute cute little bubble icons like here on the side. I always appreciate just these little helpful tips that they throw in there. These gloves were clearly made for someone with smaller hands than I. And then for the three soap packets, I am supposed to follow the same mixing instructions. So I'll mix one on camera and the other two off camera to save time. Let's dump all three of these into their containers. The powders are already pre-colored, which I appreciate. Ooh but they don't smell very good, which I do not appreciate. All right, guys, I've already gotten to something disappointing. The second step in the instruction is to add body wash. Measure for each packet one and a half tablespoons of body wash. But the little cup they gave me doesn't measure in tablespoons, it measures in milliliters. Luckily, both of those measurements are volume measurements and not weight measurements, so I can do a calculation real quick on my phone. However, it would have been handy for them to just tell me to add 22 milliliters. After you add the body wash, they then say to add a teaspoon of oil, but they don't include any oil in the kit. So you are expected to provide at least three teaspoons of oil that you may or may not have, and I don't like that very much. Luckily for them, I'm a soap maker. I've got plenty of oil. Now, just because the powder isn't scented doesn't mean the wash isn't scented. Maybe this is where they added the fragrance oil. No, it's not. Wait, maybe it is? If it is scented, it's very lightly. They also have a handy little marking for the 22 milliliters, so that's very nice. Then just write 22 milliliters on your instructions. Why? One teaspoon of oil. And then I am to mix with a fork. I don't have one, so I'm using a whisk until everything is well blended. And as soon as I added in that soap, this color got very potent very fast. All the powder has been mixed, so now I'm supposed to start kneading it with my hands until it sticks together. This is working quite well, actually. My mix now holds together and doesn't stick to my hands, so I can move along to the next two colors. All right, second color's done. All right, final color is done. Now, I might use their little tray here to mold the bubble bar eventually, but first, everyone knows we gotta do the switch roll. So it says first to clean up the area and to add a little bit of this dusting powder to an eight by eight inch square. Eight by eight inch area. Okay, so you're supposed to add it to this little piece of parchment. A little dusting here. Okay, so I'm going to make this a three layer project because y'all, my, my hopes. <laughs> They're slim and I don't want to overcomplicate it. Okay, this looks about a fourth of an inch thick to me. So now I'm supposed to sprinkle on top 
the other colors. I'm gonna start with a pink because the color transition from pink to blue I think looks really nice and it's a lot more forgiving if you mess up. <laughs> And then anything that doesn't look good on this particular project, I will simply add to that little mold over there. Okay, so now I can work on piecing this together, flattening it out. This is definitely not a project for a little bitty child. Definitely ages, I'd say seven and up probably. I definitely wouldn't do this with Lily. Alrighty, final color. I'm kind of impressed by the texture. Bubble bar texture is hard to nail. It can very easily be too wet or too dry. I don't know how Lush does it. They always get like the perfect consistency and their bars harden up so much. I really just don't know how they do that. <laughs> if you have a rolling pin, use it. <laughs> These are the types of projects that make me glad I don't live stream because y'all would be here forever watching me do this. But with the power of movie editing, you'll only be here a few seconds. Okay, Whew. now it's time to roll. I'm gonna start by just ever so slightly easing my way up. They said there will probably be some cracking, so I'm gonna try to watch for that and push it together as I'm going along. Yeah, I can see on the edges here, there's a little bit, but I'll just clean it up. The edges are probably what I will put in this container. Oh no, it's breaking. Don't break, not today. You will stay together. I'm trying to let the warmth of my hands try to like smish it together, melt it real good. Now, I know these edges are going to go bye bye but I don't want that to be the first thing we see when we slice into it, so let's cut an actual bar. All right. <gasps> oh my gosh. I would not have expected it to look this good in a thousand years. It's the texture. The texture is absolutely perfect. And while there's a teeny tiny bit of cracking on the ends, I have to say, and this is so sad, but it ought to let you know that bubble bars are not my strong suit. This is by far the prettiest bubble bar I've ever made. It's just so perfect. I can't get over it. I mean, look at that. These look like those little fancy candies that they make where they pull it and then make canes and then they stretch it and they come out looking super dope. I wish they smelled better. That's the one thing. Oh no, I just broke it. I pushed a little too hard and I broke it. Okay, so for these final four, including the one I broke, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put them in this little container. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little dusting powder in here as they told me to. What's in this dusting powder anyway? It doesn't say, but it looks like baking soda or washing soda. Okay, let's just push this in. Okay, so you're supposed to fill one mold at a time like I just did and then push it out immediately. I don't know if that's gonna work. I might've needed to add more dusting powder. Oh, well, mm, yeah, it stuck pretty bad. Let's try that again, but with more dusting powder. Um, yes, more dusting powder is the answer. Let's try the butterfly this time. All right, pop this puppy out. Oh, come on, don't stick, no. <laughs> well, that ain't, that ain't great. I'm making my own shape with this one. <laughs> Look where I rolled it around. It even has a cool design on the inside of that. Okay, guys, I'm going to put these on a little tray they have to dry overnight. Then we can test them in our bath water. Until then, they'll just be looking adorable on this plate. Now this professional kit has way more ingredients and packaging with Wholesale Supplies Plus and their kits is eh. There's a lot of plastic bags, like way more than is necessary. Every single color has its own bag. It also just comes thrown together in the box. So if you order something else from Wholesale Supplies Plus, it's gonna be intermingled with all of these items because what's actually happening is that they are simply compiling for you some products they already carry. Like they carry singly cornstarch in two ounce bags. 
So they just grab all the different bags of stuff they carry singly, put it together for your kit, which is why, in my opinion, there's so much waste. The other thing that is slightly irritating about this is that when I went through my checklist to make sure that everything was in my box, I got down to the instructions and it said this, customer to print online, meaning go to our website and print out the ingredients. Now I've already spent $40.44 on your kit and you're not gonna print out one single piece of paper? I don't think so. As far as packaging and presentation goes, the first kit is winning. One point for Team Cheapo. Okay, I've already found another thing. <laughs> So there's the shopping list, right? Then there's the recipe ingredients. So it's not a dump this into that. It's you have to have a digital scale. We will give you imprecise ingredients and you will have to measure all of them out. They did, however, provide gloves, mask and a hairnet. I always appreciate that they do that. It helps you follow good manufacturing practices. So I have my dry ingredients, I have my fragrance oil, I have my liquid ingredients, and I have glycerin here to the side to start adding as I mix up this dough. I'm gonna put my mask on because that lamp and all is potent. All right, time to add the liquid ingredients. I'm supposed to knead this together slowly. Man, this fragrance smells amazing. It smells so good. Trying to mix, mix slowly. Also, when I bought the kit, I didn't realize it was like Christmas themed. <laughs> But there's like a little holly berry and stuff on top because it is Christmas themed. All right, time to start adding the glycerin. I can take off my mask now because all those little particles are completely incorporated. Start with three tablespoons, they say. Okie dokie. Three tablespoons it is. One, two, three. All right, guys. After mixing and mixing and mixing, I think I finally have what would be considered a dough. Now for the fun part the colors. I'm supposed to measure off three different sizes for this. 10.25, so that's this one. 11.25, so that's this one. And then 1.7, so that's this one. That's funny, I still have some left. I better put it off to the side just in case I need it for something. So this first color is gonna be brown. This is gonna be the chocolate cake portion. So I have cocoa powder and a little bit of brown oxide, and I'm supposed to mix that together. Ooh, all right. The chocolate one is done. Oh, this is not good. Hmm. So I thought I was going to be ready to roll this out, but my ingredient mixture is starting to crack and get very dry. So I'm just adding in a little bit more of the glycerin. Hopefully that will help it stay together and get soft again. I haven't been working slow by any means, but this is a lot of stuff to mix in by hand. And it would appear that the working time is rather short. Adding that little bit of glycerin did seem to help some. Just gonna mush this out like I did for the other one. Trying to doctor up any edges that I happen to be messing up at the same time. Yeah, look at this white mixture, y'all. It's just crumbling to bits. Gonna add a little bit more glycerin to this one as well. I guess the good thing about it drying out so quickly is that more than likely, it will dry out pretty quick and not be so squishy in the finished product. All right, I'm gonna do what I did before and just place little bits of the white all in the center. Okay, time to roll. All right, so it's rolling pretty easy. There's a little bit coming up onto the paper, but you know, that's to be expected. And I've learned that the tighter I can make this roll, the more little circles will be on the inside. So I do my best to make it as tight as possible whenever I roll it. Last little roll here. All right. So again, not nearly as smooth as the little kid craft kit. Having to piece everything together looks kind of bumpy. Now, here's something I've never seen with any bubble bar recipe. They want you to let this sit for 24 hours before you cut it. Now, you guys remember, I had some extra left over. That's what I'm holding in my hand right now. I never had to use it for anything else. It was just a discrepancy in what they said the weight should be versus what it actually was. And then I'm gonna try to roll this out a little bit and place it on top, like icing on top of the Swiss roll. Roll this out a little bit, get it to be as long as the roll itself, about that long. Then I'm gonna smash it out till it's nice and thin. Just place it 
on top. So you guys can see it's a little bit bumpy on top of this log. So I just put a little bit of glycerin on there to try to melt the top a little bit and make it a little smoother. All in all, I would say that frosting addition on top covered a lot of sins. So now I've got to make some little cherries. So I'm going to take that extra bit of white. I'm going to add their Santa red colorant to the middle of it. And then I'm going to make this pretty dark. I saw from their picture they made it like a really light color, but but I want it to look like a real cherry, not just like something vaguely pink. Like if they gave me this much dye to use, I'm gonna use it. Ugh, okay, that took forever. Those colors are not very pigmented. Okay, now to put the little cherries on top. They said to wait to do this until tomorrow, but there's absolutely no way it would stick if I waited. I'm sure it's because this red is gonna stain this white on top, but it wouldn't have stained the brown, that little white on top was my own addition. I don't know why they would have you wait instead of like adding it right now because it would absolutely just fall over. It does tell you before you get started that this can take up to two hours and they were not lying. I have been out here for two hours and 20 minutes making six little bubble bars. For some people though, that might be therapeutic. I'm just putting it out there that it does take a long time. Ugh, last little leaf. Okay, whoo, all right. I'm gonna move this over like they told me to. We're gonna let it sit for 24 hours. Then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna chop up these bars. I mean, this thing is already quite hard. I'm not gonna lie. Will it be worth all of our time? We'll have to see. Okay guys, so it's been 24 hours. I have done some tub tests and I can tell you the results are shocking. So one of the things I did was weigh the completed product. So for the $8 craft kit, there was nine ounces of completed product after a 24 hour sit time. For the Wholesale Supplies Plus kit, there was 24 ounces of completed product, over a pound. And if you break it down by cost, get this. The Wholesale Supplies Plus kit ends up being about $1.66 per ounce. And the craft kit ends up being about 88 cents per ounce. But remember, the craft kit was on sale for 50% off. So if I paid the whole $16, it would have been $1.77 per ounce. So if I had paid full price, the craft kit at the store actually would have been more expensive per ounce. But that's not all. As you can see from this B-roll I'm about to put in, the kid's craft kit looks pretty good the next day. There weren't any cracks. It stayed together really well. It was, I will say, a little bit brittle. So if you squeeze on it too hard, it is going to bust into a million pieces. But look how it acts in the bathtub. First of all, the color, disgusting. That is a horrible color. It just mixes them all up together and makes this really nasty yellow brown. And number two, no bubbles, no bubbles at all. How do you make and sell a bubble bar kit that doesn't bubble like at all? There was almost nothing in it. And I can't imagine as a kid thinking I was gonna have a solid bubble bath, putting this in and the disappointment that would ensue. Like my mom would have to add some other bubble bath because I'd be so upset. Now I think I know why it was discounted 50%. This little beauty on the other hand performed beautifully. So after 24 hours, it's still a little bit soft. There's a lot of glycerin in this formula and I had to add even more because it dried out so quickly. So there is a little bit of squish left to it and I feel like you would need to be kind of delicate with handling it, but the bubbles, y'all, copious amounts of bubbles. I did use my hands to agitate the water as I do with all bubble bars because I just feel like that really helps the bubbles reach their full potential. And that, my friends, is a bubble bath. That's what I want to see from a bubble bar. All in all, 40 bucks is a lot to cough up for a craft kit, but if it yields good results and it's long lasting and it doesn't take much to get the amount of bubbles that I got in my bathtub, that was only using half of a bubble bar to get all those bubbles. So you could 
break it in half. I was able to cut six really decent sized bubble bars. So if you chop that $40 into six parts, you end up paying about $6.66 for each bubble bar, which is still almost half the price of the bubble bars at Lush. And this kit ships free. So I have to say, even though I really thought that the craft kit was gonna beat it out at the beginning, the Wholesale Supplies Plus came in by a landslide. This might have been a tortoise and the hare situation. The kitty bubble bar just took a nap at the finish line. So would I recommend overall this kit for you guys to try? Absolutely. It's definitely worth your money. It's cheaper than buying like six bubble bars from Lush. You have the fun of making it and these would make really, really cute gifts around the holiday season. I'm definitely gonna try more of the bubble bar kits from Wholesale Supplies Plus in the future because I know you guys like it when I test the more professional makers kits for you to try at home with your kids and stuff. Also, this one smells way better than the other one. Like you're swimming in Nutty Buddies. Oh yes, and I saved one to chop on camera. I did end up cutting these a little earlier than they suggested just because I wanted them to start hardening faster so I could film the video. But of course, you can wait as long as they say to. We did for this one and I'll show you what it looks like when you cut it after waiting that long. All right, let us cut this bubble bar right down the middle. And this is what it looks like. Oops, that one broke a little bit. This is what happens, I think, when you let them sit for a little too long. So I probably wouldn't recommend letting them sit for a full 24 hours. I let mine sit for two hours before I cut the rest of them. And that's what I figured would happen. But the inside looks so nice and it actually did make that nice roundy shape. I was a little bit worried, but it looks edible. It does look like a delicious dessert. Thanks you guys so much for watching today's video. If there are any other maker kits you want me to test out, send me some links or tell me about it in the comment section below. I will happily spend my money so you can save yours. <laughs> And have yourself an absolutely marvelous day. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that's going out and getting yourself a bubble bar kit so you can make them cheaper at your house. Or maybe you just want to go eat a Nutty Buddy. All the same, do something that makes you happy, and I will see you guys soon. So until next time, bye for now. Meow.